McDermott. Mr. Yeah. McDermott, John, I'm going to tell you something. Know, John, that was one of the most racist comments I have heard in a very long time in this was, in this chamber. It was, it was How racist. dare you? Well, How dare you say that small units create ghettos? Well, I was making a compare. I saw a report. I don't want to take Mr. Burns's thunder away from him. Mm -hmm. Do you know what size units they're building on in Solomia? Oh yes, I know that. What's the number? 400 square feet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Does that make it a better project? I hope not. Right. Yeah. I. So, so I understand. It isn't. Yeah. We're not going to go there. Yeah. You're not going to go there. Yeah. Let's not. 500 square feet is not unreasonable if, if they're randomly distributed throughout housing projects. I don't mind them being randomly distributed, as I stated before. I am all for that. I do not mind them being randomly distributed. I do not mind an uh, a percentage being assigned to them. That's, that's what I said, and, and I will stand by that. But I don't want a development to be restricted to just that size. So if the language lends itself to mm -hmm. it being just 550 square feet, I have a problem with that. Now, if we specify 10%, 20%, 20%, whatever. Yeah. However we're going to do it, let's, let's, let's just specify what that 550 or that 500 is attached to. That's all I'm saying. And as far as the whole ghetto comment, I don't know. I can't subscribe to that. But what I stated before, I, and I'll, I'll stand by that. If it's scattered, we'll work around that. But for the whole entire development to be well, just 500, just then that's just fine. That's, that okay, and we can scatter that, and we can limit it, and we can assign a percentage to it. We can assign a number to it. I'm okay with that. Now, let me also advise you that I've done this a lot, and, and this is not my first time doing this type of work with communities. This issue arises a lot, and when you start assigning a specific ratio, you need to be careful that you're not going to skew the market. That is something I just want to caution you. You ha you all have every right to make your advisory. I'm here not as an adversary. Please don't think I am. I'm here to tell you the honest tr truth and give you best professional practices and principles for you to m help make your decisions. It is certainly not my place to tell you what to do, but I need to tell make sure that you are fully advised of some of those factors that you should be considering. The other issue is that planners, one of the things that we have learned over the years is that setting affordable housing in one section of your community is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's a bad thing. It is better that it is just dis distributed through the market because then you end up with situations where you may have, okay, well, the only place this can go is right here. So what are you going to end up with, Ms. Bull, then is, is all the small apartments going in one place, which is not what you want. No, I said evenly distributed. And also, what makes 750 square feet unaffordable? Why not build it to where it is affordable to the residents? Mm -hmm. Again, why do the residents have to be confined to a matchbox for a living corridor or a living space for it to be affordable. It isn't, it isn't saying that this is the size it has to be. It's saying this is the minimum. They and, can be bigger. And we all know that we're the builders are, or the developers are going to start with the minimum. The bulk of, of their um, projects will start with the minimum. We know that. So let's, 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 let's not do that. Your, these, the three meetings that you all had, or the five meetings or whatever that you all had, the few people that were in attendance do not speak for the entire city. But there were several hundred people in attendance at okay, these meetings. Okay, and there's several thousand uh, and, residents in the and, city. And Ms. Bull, I do not want to have an adversarial relationship with you, and you're taking it like I am fighting you. I'm not. You're I'm not giving you, I'm giving you the advice that came from the community. And, I, and I'm That's giving all I'm you my opinion. You. And, that, and, and I understand. As well as the sentiment of okay. other city residents that I've right. spoken to right. about right. this well, situation. Let's, let's, let's cut this because we're achieving nothing at this point. The chair will call for a motion on, on 
We'll start at the 500 square feet. Do we have a motion to approve or reject? I reject. All right. Do we have Do we have a second to that? Then it dies for lack of a second. Do we have a motion to approve? Vote. Yes or no? 500. All right. We got no, no, no. It's a yes or a no. You either approve or not. I mean, can't we um, use conditions? Uh, we've done it with others. No. We, we need to get over this. But let's okay, can't we add conditions we get, to we it? We began this discussion. I think there was, there was square footage and, and some restriction around it. Yes, there were, there were some proposed restrictions in location. So I'm, I'm un personally, I'm uncomfortable with 500, 550 with some restrictions around it. I'm comfortable with, but yeah, I can do whatever those are. All right. And, and if we so can't get to 500, so. then we can, can we go 550? I would, with I restrictions, would stick with yes. the 550. I, right. I, I okay. have a problem with the fact that I don't think because of the uh, aspect of the market and the way that builders who want to build mixed use, who want to put 750 square foot or more units in a building, but also want to build, you can't tie their hands up. But are the builders and, and living in these units? Are the builders living in these units? They're not living it's in the units, that. they're building the units. But they're it's, not the building cost, it's the cost of construction and the cost that they're so going to get on return. So we inconvenience the residents. No. We, tie, we tie their hands behind their backs because of a cost issue? Yes, because, oh, because okay. it's passed on to Great them. Job, Don't guys. you understand? You, you have to understand the way the market works, <coughs> Ms. Belay. It costs a lot of money to build things the, now. The, I understand well, that, and that's why, understand I said, that that's why that I said I'm willing to work around it, but to just completely, I mean. Nobody's building a city of 500 square foot units. It's, it's we're, giving we're builders a, flexibility based on what they think is their particular market. So, yeah, so we'll let the builders start at 500 square feet. <laughs> I make a motion that we approve 550 square oh, feet. Okay, that should be uh, right. throughout the city. We had a statement read into the record early on as to where this should be lo located. Would you like to give your location, Johnny? Yes, you, you did make a recommendation on location. I did, I did. My, my point was that in the areas where you're trying to foster development, which are your special purpose districts. Okay. That's where I suggested 500 square feet. And when you asked me what my rationale was, or, or I think Mr. Ernst asked me the rationale, you've allowed 450 square feet in units on Solomia that are going to be very expensive units. And where you are correct that not everybody in the community came out and spoke about it, but people did. People did speak about it. And the other communities around us are doing this very thing. And what percentage so of the residents do those people make up? Again, did you go to the meetings? What percentage what of the did residents? Did you go to the meetings? So you, can't, you, can't ask so. A, you can't answer a question yeah, with a question. What right. percentage of the residents do those people make up? Whoever so if you cannot spoke, answer that, then I can Whoever your spoke did not take your position. Okay. What percentage so my of point the residents? to answer your question, Mr. Seyfried, so is no, the following. The answer your question, to answer your question, Mr. Seyfried, this is what I've proposed. You can't say offensive things and not think that I'm not going to answer either. Do you, is it okay if you don't interrupt me? So what I'm saying is, in the <laughs> districts in which you're fostering development, your special purpose districts, to have, let's just put it out there, 500 square feet, no more than 20% of those units. That's what I would be asking for. And 550 square feet is <laughs> the related group Studios. Which knows what they're doing. Yeah, 550 square feet, studios, 20 per 500 <laughs> feet, studios, 20%. The related group, which knows what they're doing, have models of less than 500 square feet that they're building. This is what's happening. And when we're talking about senior housing, okay, we're talking about senior housing, people living on a fixed income, okay? 
and, and there are people in this community who don't want senior housing and they're despicable. But as far as seniors go, which is what we're talking about in certain developments, these people are living on a fixed income, okay? Millennials can't make a living anymore, okay? They will never have the standard of living that we have. Oh, they will one day, John. Yeah, one day. <laughs> one day they will. One day. The market lost 300 points today. One day they will. This is the United States. Right. United States. Right. Okay. So all I'm saying is that forget all the arguments. Studio apartments, 500 square feet, 20 percent in the areas that are special purpose districts because that's where you're developing. Special purpose. Well, we call I, that the UNRO? I agree with Mr. McDermott when he said um, students and seniors. Now, I would be okay with it if it were a certain number for students and seniors and that it was studios, that it was re uh, restricted to studios. I don't, I don't think you can do that. You can't specify particular when, when you're marketing that. They have to sell that to anybody. It's called Fair Housing Act. Well, that's the area that we would target, what I guess. Is, uh, but, but we, but we didn't say that, that to Mr. McDermott, so why are we saying that to me? The special use in the special, uh, the special districts, which includes the NRO. Well, what else that's interesting. Actually, what else you have to make the decision. That's the reason that, that yeah. we invite and I told you that. And what I'm saying is, at the end of the day, my decision is not going to change, whether it's overwritten or not. Um, if it's spread around, I'm okay with it. Okay, if it's a so studio and it's 550 square feet, certain percentage, I'm okay with. Period, point blank, the end. We can put a cap on 20% per project, not more than 20%, 500 square feet. Do we have the support for that? 550 square feet, yes. Well, I asked for 500 first. We'll, we'll start low and work our way up. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Mike can go with 500. As long as we have the percentage in. With the percentage in. Charlie, I'm not asking for the vote yet, but I'm taking the sounding. Yeah, I'm okay. All right, Kenny's okay. That's two. Yeah, we'll go with 500. We'll go with five. It's, five. A, it's a compromise, I, but I'll live with it. I will, but I, I, I'd like to define the, the special purpose districts doesn't is subject to interpretation. I mean, All right, can no. we get a rundown, Nixon, on our special district? Yeah. Yeah. Special purpose districts can include uh, the CD. But it's actually an article, in, I mean, division in your... Yeah, it's a division under, uh, under article, article 4, and then it includes um, on the residential office, the PD, the arts, cultural and design of the district, the public use district, the NRO, which is the neighborhood development of the district, the regional activity center of the district, the plan corridor development of the district, PCD, the plan community urban design of the district. Those are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which or nine. Is which is the, the core of the section? city. Okay. It's uh, on the Division One, uh -huh. Section 4-101C, and that okay. lists them. And then if you go further into Division um, Three, I would see. Next, which page are you on, please? Yes. Oh, I was on the first page of Article Four. It lists them. Just the uh, one down, you know, of all the special purpose of a, a district. Victor, what page are you on? Page, page one. Page it's one. Yeah, it's C, Article four. Overlay and Special Purpose Districts. The RO, the PD, the AOD, the PU, the NRO, the RAC. Okay. Four, five, six, seven. <laughs> there's eight. There's eight yeah. districts. Okay. Which is basically the core of the city. Yeah, I'm mean, not in the session because uh, the RO district is basically, you find them especially behind the commercial properties on the west side of 7th Avenue. It's like a transition zoning between the commercial, high intensive commercial district and the residential family to the west. It's like a sliver. It's yeah. not that much, yeah. All right, so at this point, the chair now calls for a motion to adopt the 500 square foot, 20% max of a project in the overlay and special purpose district. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I move for uh, approval. All right, Mr. Ernst moves for approval. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Each. We've had our discussions. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. 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 All right. That How many no? Yeah. Uh, Are you a no, Mike? Or yes? No, yes. Yeah, Mike yes. in the yay. Yes. Ms. Boulay was the objection. 
which is okay. I think we so it's, that. So it's 500 square floor. feet, 20% yeah. yeah. in the special purpose. Max 20%. No, they are all over there. The special purpose are all over Only the special purpose district. Overlay and special right. purpose. Oh, 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 oh. The overlay and special which purpose all of districts all of only for But I years. thought you said we were going to start at 500 and work our way up. We did it the just, 500 path. So but we didn't we say anything about the 550. We didn't, we didn't say 535. We didn't. The chair says we didn't need to because we got an affirmative vote of 500. Remember, but this is still a draft. Should we go forward? All right. I don't agree Mr. with Chairman, that. I understand that. Thing, yes. But then you turn around Chairman, and did something point else. Of order. Yes, sir. If I might. Um, in quoting... Um, in quoting an article in reference to this very subject earlier, um, perhaps I should have said slum or climb ridden or whatever, but I was quoting. Oh, your mic? Is your mic, is your mic thrown on? Can you hear me now? Uh, I don't know. Talk to the mic. Junia, can you hear me? For the chair. You, the when chair, you speak, you're not using the mic. You don't, you, you don't <laughs> use the mic. Oh, you, there, is that better? Oh, okay. Sorry. I forgot about that. Minor thing, we need about $500,000 to redo the room and get microphones for everybody. And uh, enough chairs for people here. We need seven chairs up here and seven mics. Take that up with Mr. Spring. Okay, Mike, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I said in quoting, uh, in, in our earlier discussions, in quoting an, an, an article, and I was quoting the direct term out of the article, Perhaps I should have modified it and said slum or crime ridden or I don't know what the term is. But what I was, what they were trying to say is that you have to be, we are not Brickell Avenue. And, um, y you know, you, there's two sides of building smaller units. One is that you provide um, places for people to live. And others are that I if, if, an, if a community is economically challenged or if a country or a section or a state or a town uh, suffers economic setbacks, then they are certainly one of the more challenged cities, as the city council and uh, has said on many occasions. You know, the smaller units some, sometimes can become an, an area of overcrowding, uh, which begets a lot of problems. There are, it, it, so you know, apologies, uh, everything works both ways, but we've yeah. made a decision, we've made a recommendation, this will be further revised as it goes down the road, so let's move on to the last item, if there is an Article 4, I have one axe to grind with Article 4, and, I have one. and you have one, alright, I'll let you go first, I'll save mine for the end. Yeah. <laughs> um, really, it's, it's, it's something that I need clarification on, if we go to page 39, Article 4. Um, uh, I, I, need to, I need to find out how we came up with, um, let me get to the right article here, I got, sorry, page 39, in the planned corridor overlay districts we, we talk about, um, we're allowing 200 feet along Northwest 7th Avenue, but yet along Northeast 6th Avenue, we only allow 110 feet. Biscayne on the west side, 110 feet. I, I, I need to know how we came up with 200 feet along the Northwest 7th Avenue corridor. How, how that came about, and what was, uh, uh, the when we said west of, uh, uh, east, east of, uh, on the east side of 7th Avenue, not on the west, but on the east side. Are we talking about bordering I-95, that one stretch in yes. there? Yes, yes. And I'm, I'm still having a hard time visualizing putting something that would be 200 feet high along that corridor. I, I mean, I again, some rationale it, again to me this is this. language from the complaint. And then uh, as you and recall... And it or not, I came up with the higher plan, but I have no idea how that got into looking at that corridor and, and getting put into that little stretch, narrow stretch there. I, I mean, uh, in term, I don't think it's that narrow because it's pretty deep in, in parts, but uh, that number was what there was a planning council recommendation to the city council with the complaint, especially on Northwest 7th Avenue, and I'm pretty sure you were talking about, you know, we see all those 
uh, tall buildings along 95. And, and then uh, we established a facility there with a greater height. We don't hide greater than, and then that proposed in the other PCD corridors of the city. It, it, w <coughs> it was supposed to have been a residential component, but however, when that got to the city council, and the city council m approved the PCD along the Northwest 7th Avenue, and the excluding the western portion because of the proximity to the single family, right. and they are only allowing that along 95, however, with no residential com component. So, so that's how. So, this is the same exact language from the complaint that is being in transported into this, because uh, we have to create a new section right. for that PCD to reflect, you know, those amendments. Well, in reality, no, no developer has come forth with a 200-foot-high building for that area. Correct. I mean, I mean so far, is, is it even marketable or or even realistic to put a 200-foot building along that corridor? I, I, you know, I can't visualize. Um, I mean, I mean, I mean, in terms of, 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 of the building, the, the structure itself, yes, it, it can be built structurally speaking. But as far as you know, I mean, if you have received any inquiries, you know, from developers, you no, know, so far we have yeah. no. Does it does no. it go against the grain of what you termed as the Chinatown overlay? Which, I mean, uh, which may not even. Their architectural height and the design may not even be comparable to a 200-foot well, building. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, again, uh, I know I'm yeah. the one that supported the 200-foot building limit, and, and you know, if, if, maybe if I, I said may. it flippantly at the time or whatever, but it's really maybe you could ask make any to it. A, well, as you go downtown, you, you see off of I-95, tall buildings over yeah, 200 feet. But they're on the other side. And no, I, I like see some on uh, on the west side, but the fact is that we haven't stayed one of the reasons the I commercial. think that we're shooting ourselves in the foot by not letting residential go there, because eventually, w we think in the near term, unfortunately, back in the 80s, when we, we passed a, a thing, we couldn't build any higher than four stories. We shot the city in the foot. We we, we killed development. So I, I'm looking at the traffic jams that you got right now right. coming down I-95. Huh? You guys are planners. Eventually, people don't want to drive all the way up to Broward County. They want to move closer to Brickell or closer to the central business district of the downtown Miami or, or the port or what have you. And that area will develop, just like any other city. If you go to Chicago, New York, or what have you, San Francisco, L.A., you'll see tall residential mixed-use buildings off of the expressway. And I probably won't see it in the next 20 years, but you know what? I venture to say that that's going to probably be one of the wealthiest areas of the city if we do it right, if we plan it right. Just like 119th Street, I, I don't know. Yeah. That, that can be turned around and, and, and really be turned into a nice area. And I, I think that if we did, if we let residential go over there, you would have great mix use, office, residential, commercial. But we're not, you know, uh, yeah. not eventually. Uh, 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 All right. Uh, again, I was, I was not, uh, I'm not, I'm not advocating opposition to it. I, I needed to understand why we came up with the 200 feet and how this, this got by. And I personally don't think that anybody's going to build a 200 foot I, I, well, I would hope so and it's a great class A1 no, but, 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 class, but then class again A1. it's a maximum, it's not a minimum yeah. Yeah. so you'll have to build all the way to 200 right. feet okay so. there is one issue that I've got and I'd like to know where we can address it in this area that we are politely calling Chinatown mm -hmm. which is that area of Northwest 7th Avenue from 125th to 135th we have specifically disallowed residential housing. I'm sorry. On, it's we very specifically disallowed residential housing. Where, where is that? Where right, is and it does say that in in the in the northwest seventh corridor, Seven. because that's what your comprehensive plan says. Yeah. Well, I want to go on record as telling you that. That is, in my opinion, an artificially engineered travesty. I don't know the motivations behind it. 
but there is no mixed-use development anywhere that can possibly succeed without a strong residential component. And the powers that be that have sought to do this are incredibly nearsighted, misguided, and obviously being fed this by sources that have not as yet come into the public light. And as chairperson of this commission, I make it my statement and would seek the input of the other commissioners that that needs to change. There must be a residential component within that Chinatown development. Otherwise, all we have done is spent 30 million bucks or something for basically a can of paint. And a real expensive can of paint along there, you know. Unless we're serious about redeveloping that corridor. So far, this has been simply a public relations and marketing ploy without any real substance behind it. If you want to have meaningful mixed-use development, you've got to have residential incorporated into it. So what is the process for making a statement for residential development in that specific district? Every, Answer me that. Everything that you tell us tonight, I've been documenting. Yeah, please do. I've been documenting in my chicken scratchy handwriting. Whether you agree with it. As long as you it, can read it. Of course. Whether you agree with it or disagree with the situation, I'm documenting it. These comments then go on a specific form that when it goes before, when this same document goes before city council, they will know these are your recommendations. You, you disagreed on something, you didn't get consensus, or yes, you did get consensus on, some, on a particular thing. I would ask the Planning Commission to make an affirmative recommendation that residential housing specifically be included along the Northwest 7th Avenue corridor, which is also known as Chinatown. You're talking about on the west side of Northwest 7th Avenue? Well, I mean on the east side of Northwest 7th Avenue. In the district, and let them sort out which side to put it on. You see, we've called that a mixed-use district. We've called Not it Chinatown, but we haven't done anything with it. But uh, uh, maybe uh, from 119th to 143rd. I thought there was mixed-use allowed on the west side. Uh, Is that they correct? They no. specifically bar no. residential. Off of I-95. Yeah, I-95 I I makes perfectly good sense where to put it, sure. although I don't want to tell them where to park it yet. I think we should just make the affirmative statement that it needs to include a residential Sure, and, uh, and you probably, like Charlie said, you'll probably get some developers then. Yes, you might, but, I, but, but the first step is for the Planning Commission to make an affirmative statement by means of a resolution, a motion that that needs to be incorporated into that development. Uh, I won't do it because I, I have issues with the whole concept of Chinatown, so Irrelevant. I don't want to. They want to develop the district, and right now they're not allowing any residents, any residential yeah. units. I, I, I agree with you, but I think that the point still is, if anything is going to be done there, it, it is going to have to be a residential component. Right. Yes, and currently they right. disallow that, and, and I think we need to take the exact the opposite position and make it clear that however they need nice to do this, there uh, must be a residential <laughs> incorporated into it. Well, I can concur I'll, I can with that. Would you make a motion to um, that effect? Second. Uh, yes, I'll go ahead and make I a motion to that, makes a motion that, that a residential unit uh, uh, be incorporated. <laughs> Uh, in the designation, uh, uh, Johnny Town designation. Mm -hmm. Whatever they yeah, want to call it or whatever they want. On, but right. in the 7th Avenue corridor, which currently is called Chinatown, mm -hmm. and may change next week, we never know. Or as listed in the LDA, the, the, the 7th Avenue corridor. Yes, yeah, the 7th Avenue corridor. Right. Right. There's my motion. We've got a motion, we've got a second. Mm -hmm. Any commission discussion? Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Held. So, a specific recommendation would be to urge the city commit city council to put a residential to component in there. An amendment to the comprehensive plan to yes. allow residential. Absolutely. Or just ch amend the term where it says land use. Introduce it there. Well, the point that staff has made is that it's in the comprehensive plan and that needs to be amended before you can do it in the Yes, so make the recommendation that we do it that way. All right, that's the clarification. Is We're that fine with that. Correct. Well, we, yeah. I have to make the statement. Otherwise, whatever game they're playing is going to be a wasted effort. Well, when you say residential, are you talking about apartment complexes, lofts, things of that nature, or 
like homes and townhomes. And well, you, you, it, the, the, the way that the, it's a commercial district, you don't have the lot size Probably for private multi-family. residential. It has to be apartments. It's got to be multifamily in nature. Yeah, we're, we're, we're looking at multifamily. You know, with mixed with mixed like mixed the businesses mixed. at the bottom of it? it yeah. That businesses. would be mixed okay. use. Yes. Yeah. You've got to have the residential components to make that a truly viable mixed use development. And They're talking mixed use. They're not allowing residential. It is. There's got to be something going on behind the scenes why that specific area was carved out and residential was banned. And you can actually clarify to say mixed use including residential. Yes. Or uh, residential right. as well as mixed use including residential. You can put it, yeah. Well, it's really got to be mixed use because of how it's, you have very little depth to the property. So okay. you, you kind of have to just go with mixed use, with, with, with multifamily in that concept. All right. Next time we vote on the uh, motion. Yeah, let's vote on the motion. All right. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> Aye. All right. Any objection? Hearing none. That's the unanimous recommendation from the Planning Commission. Let's run that one up the up the flagpole and see what they want to do with it. Are we going to approve section four? All right. Now at this time we we've, we've had all the discussions on the issues of four. The chair will call for a motion to approve section four as amended. Sorry, Article. Amendment. Article four. Sorry. So moved. Wait, so moved. Fact, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, items uh, came up during your discussion. Um, You'd like to talk about them. Yeah, two minutes, very briefly. Two minutes, very briefly. The clock's not running. Okay. Uh, Kevin Burns, my address is Yeah, we've got that on the record. It's, it's a very minute, very simple item, but it, it just touches right. me the wrong way. Get to the point. Laundry mats on Biscayne Boulevard. We are just flat out not allowing them. There's one that was next to City National Bank for 25 years, operated very nicely. I take my comforters there. I take my dog blankets there. Nobody ever had a problem there. At the new public shopping center, there used to be a very high-end, very nice laundry mat there. Never bothered anybody. They left because uh, the, the business next door expanded. I don't think that we should just have a blanket not allow on Biscayne Boulevard the opportunity to have a laundromat. RK Plaza, in the very rear of RK Plaza, there was a laundromat there and dry cleaner that still exists today that has been there for 35 years. That's non-conforming. I don't want us to start separating the city into who, the haves and haves not who can do this. Why would you not allow a very well-operated laundromat to be somewhere within the shopping centers of either RK or the the, the uh, where the City National Bank is or the public shopping center if that's a legitimate business. If I want to do my dog comforters or, or comforters and dog beds, I have to go to West Dixie Highway or I have to go to Northwest uh, 7th Avenue. Why is it okay to have a laundromat on 7th Avenue? It's okay to have a laundromat on West Dixie Highway, but it's not okay to have a laundromat on Biscayne Boulevard. We are getting very micromanaging of your, your point is well taken of, of our community and let's you know let's what be zoning careful. district does it, it not appear in? It appears in all the commercial zoning CB one and C B two C two that is not allowed. You the just self service about laundromat? Uh huh. Yes, they they are permitted uses on C one, C two B E, C two B W. Is it new to allow them or not yes. allow them? They're, they're, they're new to be to allowed. allow them. Yes. Okay. So yes. the recommendation But didn't it come up earlier in this discussion no, not I to allow them? Not, not in that sense. No, we didn't. Well, Bob, didn't you bring I, it up to say not to allow them? I brought it up. It's okay. Bob brought it up. The, the councilman, the commissioner brought it up not to allow them. And there was, uh, there was no really much conversation because something you just glanced over. I think it's wrong not to allow but they are. that. The current it's plan the current is recommended plan is allows the, the plan. current plan is recommending it. The current code says no. You had a commissioner that brought up said that he didn't think it should be allowed, okay. and there was nobody who voiced an opposition to or for or with it. I would like to see you all support allowing them to be on Biscayne Boulevard and not excluded just strictly from Biscayne Boulevard. Thank you. And I don't own a laundromat. Okay. Didn't remember. Uh, laundromats are fine with me. One, two, three, four. I agree. They're, they're, not they're not fine with me, no. All right. Well, then we'll take a motion to recommend they be included. So moved. I move it be included. I second. All right. And Ms. Belay seconds. 
And we'll take a vote. One, two, three, four to one, right? Bob, you're opposed. I'm opposed. All right, four to one, we recommend the inclusion of laundromats. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, Mr. Chairman. Yes. <coughs> I've sat name? here very politely yes. and patiently waiting for Thank my you. turn while others have come up and been recognized. We, we to understand speak. The, 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 uh, the awkwardness, yes. Uh, I am speaking specifically with respect to your discussion regarding self-storage and would like to know whether I should speak about that now or ahead, as you enter because section Because it rolls five. into the next section anyway. Right, so what would you prefer? Because I'd like uh, Mr. Each to be here for the discussion. Oh. Well, he's gone to the men's room, so right. maybe we'll, we'll wait till we get into Article 5. Okay, but I, that's the reason I want no to speak. No problem. Okay. We'll get to you. Nobody's, nobody's going to get left behind. Okay. okay. All right, let's, let's address uh, Article 4. With yeah, you. we're ready to uh, move and approve Article 4. Okay. Yeah, we did. Okay, fine. Just a point of clarification, please. I don't think you voted on the change to prohibit self-storage east of Biscayne Boulevard. And if you're voting on four and it includes that, then I'd like to address it now. Well, I, I don't think that I, we've already we indicated very that. strongly that we've, we don't want self-storage anywhere between the Biscayne Canal and uh, Bayshore Drive. Some of you have done so, yes, without us having the opportunity to discuss oh, it. But so I do, don't, you, do you want storage there? I have been working for over a year on a project that would be there, yes. Oh, well, I'll let you speak to that for the record. Okay, thank you. I'm just to, well, I'm, Mr. Yeah. Each is back now also. <laughs> All right. Uh, what, what happened? No, yeah. I haven't started right. yet. Well, go ahead and state your I'm, name for the record. My name is Josh Dubin, and my office is at 17701 Biscayne Boulevard. My wife has had a store in North Miami for 40 years and uh, grew up down the street in the shores. Um, I'm, I just want to, you know, under the theory that a picture is worth a thousand words, if I may just approach and, and give this to you. Yes, you may. We want to make sure everybody gets their opportunities here. Uh, I'm part of the group that owns the Beachway Apartments, which are directly opposite the Total Bank Building on 123rd and 19th Avenue. Our property is, uh, prior to today, zoned residential, multifamily, but has a commercial designation in the future land use map. Uh, over a year ago, I was here till 4 o'clock in the morning when discussion was had about whether it should be residential and get 110 feet or it should be commercial and have 55 feet. And we sat and went through the process and have spent the last over 12 months meeting with council people. We've met with every council person. We've met with citizens in the area. We've met with architects. We've met with staff. What, we've, what we have been planning on doing for the last eight to 12 months, waiting for the LDRs to be finalized, was to come in there and build a self-storage facility that is transit oriented so that it has bicycle storage, a built-in bus stop, a sh North Miami shuttle stop if need be, uh, and, and went to great lengths to design one that I think you will agree looks like an office building or uh, a, a Hampton Inn or something else of high quality. It does not look like a self-storage. I gotta say this does look good. Okay. So the, the point I want to make is I think you're being a little bit arbitrary and perhaps too, too uh, exclusive by saying you absolutely don't want something when you have the right when it comes to site plan approval and design approval to see what it is we're proposing and to eliminate the use just ab initio without hearing what it is and seeing what it is that some of us are contemplating. We have a, a dilapidated three, three apartment building property now that we're doing our best to keep alive given its age and its condition. This project is a 15 to $20 million project that would go on the corner of 19th Avenue and 123rd Street. It's, it's extremely well received by other municipalities because it is very low intensity, very low parking, very low traffic, very low use of utilities, doesn't impact evacuation zones, and can be used as a central place for drop-off pickup if you want to cut down on traffic. This is a huge improvement in use of that location. And, and we've put something in front of you now, which is exactly the plan in its current, st I won't say exactly, it's our design in its current stage that we've met with staff on, et cetera. 
I'd ask you to reconsider your blanket prohibition and, and just accept the fact that your site plan approval process and your design review, if you establish a design review board and the other boards you were talking about tonight, will regulate what it's going to look like. But please do not make the economic decision to keep us from moving forward with a project that we've been working on for so long and have literally been in the communities meeting with residents and council people and staff to make sure we got the input and the design that people wanted to see there. Uh, one side comment, as you move to smaller apartments or rental apartments, self-storage is critical to these people because they're downsizing in many cases or they have no place for their luggage or their surfboard or their skis or their bicycles. This is an important component. And both with respect to the self-storage, with respect to the laundromat, which I'm just pulling out of the air now, you're making decisions. Uh, and also with respect, with all due respect, when you talk about the size of these units, you have to recognize that the marketplace is going to dictate what is successful and what isn't. So you don't need to decide if 500 is too small or if self-storage, if we have too much self-storage, because if it doesn't work, people are not going to build it. If the demand isn't there, people are not going to build it. We're not going to design it. We're not going to get financing. We're not going to get pre-sales. We're not going to get leases. So you have to trust, as much as I'm a Democrat, sorry, uh, you have to let the free market dictate what gets built and, and, and what it looks like. And so I would respectfully request that you reconsider your, your earlier discussion and not blanket uh, prohibit this from the canal to the bay, uh, specifically and selfishly speaking about my property because it's currently uh, scheduled to be rezoned C2B2, C2BE, C2BE. Um, and we worked very hard to develop language that is in the proposal you have today that limits where these things can be built. It's not going to be near single family. It's not going to be a near park. I, I, Mr. Each, I don't know if you heard when the uh, consultant was reading those things because there's very narrow parameters within which this can be built. So it's not going to proliferate around town in the C2BE areas. There's been a lot of thought, a lot of study, and a lot of input into this particular project. And I would ask you to revisit your prior discussion in consideration of it. Thank you. Saying he's, he's a worthy advocate. Yes, sir, Mr. Hill. Can I ask him a question or two? You may. Uh, what's the last name? Dubin. Dubin. Sir, I'm sorry. Uh, Josh Dubin. Josh. The microphone, please. Um, have you filed any applications with the city? No, uh, we uh, met with the city uh, prior to uh, or during the, uh, the uh, comp plan amendment process and then. Uh, designed it and redesigned it after we got some input and met with the city again on at least one occasion, possibly two occasions, um, and then went in before the end of the year and said, we would like to submit this now. Um, and we were aware that this moratorium was coming up because you were going to revisit the land development regulations. Um, we, we were advised that we ought to sit tight and let the LDRs go through and that um, we ought to attend the community meetings, which we did, uh, at least three of them, to get input from the community and to speak to the councilmen and also to the consultants, et cetera, to try to be in the best position when we came forward. Standing here today, I have a property that when we acquired had residential zoning and future land use a commercial. We, we didn't make a big uh, push for the increased height. You, you've already previously recommended over a, about, about a 100-foot project immediately next door to us, including a parking garage. Uh, we're across the street from a project that's over 100 feet tall. Um, there's, a, there's a bit of an arbitrary approach going on here. So we would have we applied had we not been urged to wait till the LDRs had, had uh, sorry, long answer to well, a short I question. I asked you to wait for the LDRs. Uh, the question came up whether it was prudent to come in with a standalone application at the end of the year when this was beginning to gain some momentum, or if it we would be better served to step back, and we've delayed our project literally probably six months by doing so, step back, participate in the process, and in the, in the community meetings and with the staff, and, and, and we've met with each of the council people um, and 
um, what, when I work on stuff like this, whether I'm an attorney for someone or whether I'm a principal, as I am in this, I like to do it from the grassroots up. I don't like to come in and try to cram it down. So we took the last six months to get out in the community, to meet with people, to meet with the council, to meet with staff, to try to come in with a project that we thought served a lot of purposes and was very attractive. And so that's, that's why we chose this path. And now I'm feeling that we were, you know, we may have made a mistake. Um, and again, we just ask you to reconsider your earlier position. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Each, the <laughs> argument and motion were yours. So we uh, turn like to you. I'd like to hear from staff on this. And, and, and we'll, uh, All right. And, uh, when, when was, you know, when did, she, did, this, did this gentleman meet with you guys on this thing? Or? Tanya, do you want to address yes. this then? Could you repeat the question? The gentleman there, that he, he said he met with you all on, on, on this program? Yes, he met with staff before um, with a request for a text amendment to allow for a storage facility in the C2BE district. Um, at the time when the proposal was made, though, the LDR process was actually already underway. Um, there's a moratorium, as you know, that's already in place which prohibits any type of submittal during the time when the LDR process is underway. So that type of text amendment has to be reviewed by the Planning Commission, as you know. So either you go the so private we route, so you still would have been right here. Either you go the okay. private route as an individual applicant or you go with the collective process as a part of the overall um, land development regulation update. But it still has to go through the Planning Commission. And, so and then to add to Tanya's answer, I'm sorry. Yeah, to okay. add to Tanya's answer, uh, because of the inconsistency between the zoning map and the land use map, he would have also to do a zoning map amendment. Correct. And then a text amendment to allow that. All right, so it's not impossible. It's just that there are two steps that have it's to be taken. It's two completely yeah. different steps that still brings you right here before this one board. Two, three, yeah. And one actually requires a supermajority vote for the map amendment, so it's even more arduous. I mean, you know, I, I look at this, and this is not what I expected when I see self-storage. I'm, I'm looking at that one on Biscayne Boulevard and south of us. And I mean, this does look like a hotel. I mean, if this is the way it's going to be done. Most people expect to see orange roll-up doors. There's, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no access from the, from the outside. It's all internal access. Parking is underneath. There's no exposed roll-up doors, et cetera. Uh, we worked very hard to project. do that. But I think it speaks to the point that the that a storage unit, a blanket prohibition probably is the wrong argument, because there are examples like this one, where this becomes a good neighbor for the neighborhood. Well, okay, and then I I, I hope that we would go ahead, sir. But it also speaks to the point where, what I stated before, how the units become so small that they will need self storage, and then too, it also speaks to the point where I believe Mr. McDermott made, um, where you, were, you made a comment about um, not being able to, pr to predict um, the market, but there are so many high rises in downtown Miami off of Brickle, which we all like to refer to Brickle, that have been unsuccessful in overbuilding, and they, they can't get the bodies in to rent these properties. So it also lends itself to that. As well, to change the I mean, I think it's well. beautiful. I really do, but it also it. speaks to the points that I made. All right, so Mr. Reach, you made the motion. It was your point to carry. Yeah, I mean, if, if it's going to be built like that, it's, it's a good it's nice. building. But I'm still, I'm still, go ahead, sir. Mr. Yeah. Chair. Can, can yes. We, could we carve out? A, yeah, I have some carve out language. Yeah, can we have a carve All out right, language? All right, let's 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 listen to what you've got. Yeah. So oh. the the prohibition was prohibit on 123rd to 125th Street right. from Biscayne Canal to Bayshore <coughs> Drive. And I've written, except for projects on, I think it was 125th Street, that have been designed and discussed with CPD staff prior to May 17th, 2017, and on which there has been reliance by the property owner proven to the satisfaction of the city attorney. All right, and that way we, we get the, the um, um, so then John, would just that door project open be grandfathered? John, what we're trying to do is we're trying to carve out. Yeah. Okay. So then would that words, project be grandfathered? I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah, so we've, we've the language would be the same except for your piece. 
I, I, that would be very much appreciated. And right. of course, we would comply with whatever your development standards are right. and well, your design comments. Uh, if, I, I would support that. If you're going to build it like this, I can I can say yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, do you currently own that apartment building over there? I don't know why you ask. <laughs> I wanna, uh, no, yes, no, yes I, I we do. No, we do. I, I mean, I like to see it gone. <laughs> yes, we do, and uh, we we do. And yes. I, I I I probably see you on my daily walk over there. And, and I don't know. You may, but um, uh, no. I, and I, I know the build. I know the area quite well. I walk through there every day. And, and by the and way, it is. It's across the street from a gas station. It's it's not as if. It, there's no industrial or, or, or well, commercial things going thing, on there. You know, the thing that we're trying to do here, and I, I've been here 40 years, is to redevelop the city, 123rd Street. How many storage areas are you going to have? You're not encouraging nightlife. You're not encouraging any synergy out there. You're not encouraging any excitement. There's no, you know, it, it, there's nothing, that, you know, hotels downtown. I, you know, I want to... I might be 71, but I still feel young. You know, I, I want to see the city. Uh, I fully understand. Yeah, and and, and and since you're, I mean, you got a lot of work into this, and I, I hate the hell like, I mean, it's a good. I, honestly, this is I'm quite surprised. Well, that's why I wanted okay, you to so see. Okay, so I, I can go along with that. Yeah. Let's collect all the pictures and I'll go along with that. Okay, so yeah, yeah, I'll go. I, I think that's a fair deal. All right, so Kenny, do we we need to make a motion to adopt the revised language? I make that motion that way. And I'll I'll second. And seconded by Mike. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. You've got your carve out. Okay. All right. We've adopted section four. We're ready to go into section five. One, one thing I wanted to mention on four, the transportation overlay district, we just made a notation on that, right? That's still going to come down the line. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chair, may yes. I make, uh, I need a, just a tad bit of a clarification. Yeah. On page seven, um, on, um, the, on the housing of Article 7, uh, on the size of the housing, yeah. you did not specifically reject the 550 throughout the city. No, we allowed it to go to 500. You allowed it, you, but you, so you are rejecting this language and replacing it with the 500, 20% uh, only in special districts, correct? Yeah, Thank you so doing. much for that clarification. Okay. All right, Chair needs to hit the men's room. We're in recess, only five minutes. And we start with article.